All right, so for page five, we have two questions. One is just dealing with a population proportion hypothesis test, so that's six. And seven is just a general question about p-values. So for six, um, a study is conducted to test the effectiveness of a treatment. So a group of 16 migraine sufferers treated um, themselves with a remedy. And of the 16 subjects, 10 were pain-free uh, pain within three hours. And using these results, the, research, the, research, the researcher um, wanted to test the claim at a 5% significance level that a majority of all migraine sufferers using this remedy would be pain-free within three hours. So since the researcher is testing that a majority of all migraine sufferers will be pain-free within three hours using this remedy, your h naught is p equals 0 0.5, and your h a is p is greater than 0 0.5. All right, so B, they're asking you to provide the observed test statistic value. So the first thing you want to know is if you're conducting a large sample Z test or a small sample binomial test. So there are 16 subjects total. And to check if you can use the large sample um, Z test, you want the number of yeses and noes to be both above um, or equal to 10. So 10 were pain-free, which is greater than or equal to 10. That's fine. However, 6 is um, not greater than or equal to 10. 6 is smaller than 10, so that doesn't work. So since we can't use a large sample z-test, we have to use a small sample binomial test. And for the small sample binomial test, the test statistic is just your observed successes. So x equals 10. All right, so part D, they say the p-value for the test is 0.227, and it asks what the distribution was. So since we're using a small sample binomial instead of a large sample z-test, our distribution is binomial with... Um, n and p naught. So in this case, our n is 16, and our p naught is 0 0.5, so our null proportion. All right, so given that your p value is 0 0.227, at a 5% significance level, the results are not statistically significant because 0 0.227 is not less than 0 0.05. All right, so next, part E, it says, it has been re recommended to repeat this study using a larger sample size for a new study design. The probability of correctly concluding that a power that a majority for all migraine sufferers using this remedy would be pain free within three hours would increase, decrease, or stay the same. <laughs> so the probability of correctly con correctly concluding that a majority of all migraine sufferers using this remedy would be pain free is the probability of accepting HA given that HA is true, which is called the power of your test. And for power of the test, sample size increases. So sample size increases your power of the test. So it would increase the probability of correctly concluding that a majority of all migraine sufferers using this remedy would be pain-free within three hours. All right, so F, besides the original study design, having a small sample of 16 subjects, what's another major issue regarding the study? So 
since you're asking the subjects um, if they're pain-free within three hours after using the remedy, perhaps there's an effect where the subjects just think they are <coughs> or imagine that they are due to the remedy. So the response would be biased. All right, so moving on to question seven. What is that p-value? A school district was interested in assessing if the dropout rate for their high school students is less than the national level of 10%. That is testing p equals 0.1 versus p is less than 0.1 at a 5% significance level. A large random sample of high school students from the district was selected, and the sample proportion that dropped out was p equals 0.12. Which of the following is the only reasonable value for the p-value? So the main idea here is that your alternative hypothesis is p is less than 0.1, and your sample proportion is actually 0.12. So your sample proportion is actually in the wrong direction. Since we're testing to see if p is less than 0.1, and we already see that 0.12 is greater than 0.1. So automatically, you know that your p-value is greater than 0.5. It's got to be greater than 0.5. So looking at all these different possible p-values, the only p-value that is greater than 0.5 is 0 